Hey guys, Coach Adam talking to you again today with the lovely Ashley Kotwasser, and we are giving you what you're asking for. We are giving you the back posing tips, all the do's and don'ts. You know, we've, we've got some knowledge on the subject, so we thought we'd share and uh, hopefully it helps you in your next competition. But I'm really excited to get into all this. So just so you guys know, this suit is made possible from Angel Competition Bikini. And uh, I love this posing suit, super colorful. Yes. <laughs> Very Ashley, this suit. <laughs> All right, tip number one. Keep those heels underneath the shoulders. Never wider, never wider. Oops. So if you look at her position here on her foot, it's basically exactly aligned. If you took the shoulders and drew a straight line all the way down, her feet are exactly aligned with them. So when she says never wider, she's basically, yep, they're going for that. It's gonna throw off her lines. It's gonna take away from the X frame. We talked about the X frame in our prior video. If you wanna see, click here. Uh, but when we're talking about the X frame, we mean wide shoulders, small waist, and feet that match the shoulder. So that's how you're gonna create that perfect X. The X needs to be balanced. It's not a like a, a X like this. It's an X that needs to be balanced. So think about that in your back pose. Make sure your foot position lines up right. Um, some people will go a tiny bit inside their shoulders. So there's an argument that it creates more of a heart shape for some people, but for, for the most part, 90% of the year, they're gonna go right under your shoulders. So if you're nervous during your competition, just think, are my heels in line with my shoulders? If we drew a line, is that where my heels are at? Now we're not saying toes, we're saying heels. And we'll get into the toes part further down the line, but heels underneath shoulders to create symmetry, right? It's all about symmetry. Tip number two, it's all about the toes, right? Some girls will face their toes forward, some will have a little outward tilt to them. And we're bringing up the clock analogy again. If we're thinking a clock, facing your toes forward would be noon, but I would say never exceed one o'clock and 11 o'clock with your feet, right? Never exceed one o'clock and 11 o'clock with your toes. Otherwise, you're gonna look like a duck, right? This kind of looks awkward. I know this <laughs> used to be a thing, but this looks really strange. And if you are a girl, who has heavy quads, muscular quads, blessed in the quad department, you're gonna to wanna to face those toes completely forward because the judges do not wanna see your quad sweep from the back. So all you girls blessed in the quad department, you better be placing those toes forward. <laughs> <laughs> when she's facing, um, when she's talking about the quads and facing forward, go ahead and put your feet a little bit wider out. Just so, I'm sorry, uh, turn your toes wider oh. out, my fault. Um, when she's doing this position where her feet are more wide out, you're gonna see a lot of the quad. If you have really big quads, Ashley's not like a juicy quad person, but, <laughs> but the quad will come from here and you'll see the line here and then you'll see it all the way down here. And that'll take away from the leg balance. It'll make you look overpowering. It'll make your balance look off. So if you do have big quads, be aware of that most likely you're gonna be pointing your toes straight ahead in that scenario. Like this. Yep, and if you, if let's say you have uh, really small quads but you wanna make them look bigger, then what do you do? Well, then you open your toes up a little bit and make them look a little bigger so you have, you still wanna to look toned, you still wanna look like you work those legs, of course. We're not saying have skinny quads. We're just saying if they're too developed, you're gonna to have to pose a certain way. If they're not developed enough, you might have to cheat it a little bit and pose it and make them look bigger. So uh, it's all about that balance and creating that illusion of the perfect physique. Now, I think that is probably the most important takeaway from this, um, these videos is that even the current Miss Olympia does not have a perfectly everything physique. But if you see her pose, you'll never find the flaw because they, everyone poses to their strengths or to, into their weaknesses, to hide their weaknesses. And Ashley, the same thing too. Every, every competitor. So always pose to make your weaknesses look like strengths and to make your strengths not look overpowering. Absolutely, we all have flaws. So you gotta find a way that fits your body type correctly. Don't just pose in a way that your favorite competitor poses because they might not be built like you. So this takes some, um, you know, this takes some research and this takes some trial and error. You can always try the old iPhone recording trick to see what works best for you. Tip number three, do not pinch those shoulder blades together. It's gonna make you look very narrow up top and we don't want that. We wanna see the hourglass shape even from the back. So in that back pose when she's doing this now, we'll remove the hair for this one, but a lot of you will have the question if you're just getting started, should I show my back? I got a good back. You're not being judged on your back muscle. 
If anything, it's gonna hurt you. So cover your back with your hair, never move it. The judges aren't looking for your back development. So on this, when she's pinch, talking about pinching, this is what she'd say pinching is. So it really shrinks her up, really shrinks up her total width. Um, you know, and you'll see some girls do that. Now, I, I do see the argument, it makes the rear delts look good <laughs> because they're flex as they can be, but that's not what we're looking for. So let's go into your natural pose. Now you'll see a little bit of width here with Ashley, a little bit of, just a little bit of V taper, not a lot. She's not fully opening her lats as much as she can. That would look weird, that would look too figure. Like she's, yeah, she's not gonna be doing that. So it's, a, it's just about having a little bit of shape, keeping your arms, your, your shoulders back so you can see a little bit of rear delt, pushing a little bit on your hands to create that rear delt, not being too wide in the arms, and uh, just creating nice shape and balance between those. So. Okay, so this next tip, I see girls do this all the time. They will drop their chest, they will hunch over a little bit, but even more noticeably, they will bend too much at the hips, okay? And I see the reason why they might think it looks better. Maybe their conditioning isn't to where it needs to be on, on stage day. So to kind of compensate for that, they will bend a little more at the hips, thinking that it gets rid of any creases and makes those hamstrings pop. However, the judges are at a low angle, so the more bent you are over, that means it's just gonna make your glutes look a lot flatter than they are in reality. It can also distort um, how thick your thighs are as well. So ideally, the more conditioned you are, the less you have to do any bending or contortion of your physique at all, right? So ideally, if you're conditioned enough, you won't have to do that bend and, uh, you know, Either way, you need to keep upright, keep tall, chest high, chin up. So the main reason that girls will start bending is because they think they can get better hamstring separation and better adductors to separate and um, show the tie-ins a little bit better on their glutes. Well, you gotta understand the only thing the judges are looking for in that back pose is good condition, good glute fullness. The more you're bent over, the flatter your glutes are gonna get. They're gonna just stretch more and look flatter. And so you wanna be as upright as you can. And the only thing they're looking for is the fullness of the glutes and the tie-in of the glute, but they are not looking for hamstring separation. They're not looking for the adductor to create a deep V. And that would be the muscle that's in between the legs when, when you see girls like kind of bending over in the gym doing RDLs and you're seeing that inside hamstring kind of line, that's the adductor. So the judges don't want to see that separation. They don't want to see that detail. So bending over generally will make things worse, even though it might look better and more muscular to you, it might make your judging score go down because your glutes are flattening out, your adductors and hamstrings are separating, um, and your tie-ins might show a little bit better, but that's not a that's not an offset to the other things that are happening. So it's gonna be all about development of those tie-ins and glute fullness more so than bending over. Now, if you have very low development, you know, I say everyone should be as straight up as they can be. Um, but I also always say, you know, you could cheat a little bit. So if you can, if you can bend just a tiny bit, maybe one inch over, and that gives you a little bit of an edge because you're not as developed. Nothing wrong with the little cheats here and there, um, but make sure that to the judges, it doesn't look like you're really bent over. If we're talking very little, if any at all. Okay, so the next tip is piggybacking off of what you just said about bending in the back pose. And I would say, you know what, if you have to bend, do more so from an arch in your back, right? However, if you are going to use a little bit of an arch in your back, make sure you're flexible enough to where the rear delt is in line with at least the top of your glute, right? And this will come from flexibility. So maybe if you're not flexible, maybe start doing some stretches or whatever, but it's important that if you're gonna arch, you need to at least match those rear delts um, to the top of your glute. Yeah. And maybe a side pose would be more of a better example yeah. for that. What she's saying is if we were to put her against a wall, her back of her shoulders and her glutes would both touch that wall, she wouldn't be forward. <laughs> she wouldn't be forward off that wall, leaning forward like this off of it. So um, that's a good uh, a tip. When I used to be able to, I used to have a pro bikini posing coach and she would actually teach people that. Put your back against the wall and try to pull your belly out. She was like, and try to pull your belly out as far as you can that way while still keeping your shoulders on the wall. And you gotta get better at that and better at that, which was kind of a fun practice because you did get everyone against the wall. <laughs> but then I get my mirrors all dirty. <laughs> That's a really good tip. That's a really good tip. So work on that flexibility. Okay, so tip number six. I always get asked like, am I supposed to flex my glutes in the back pose or am I supposed to flex my hamstrings? 
And I would say your best bet is to picture yourself doing an RDL, but it's the feeling of the top of the RDL, the end of the exercise that you should be aiming for. So you're not necessarily flexing your glutes, but more so keeping them, I guess, tense, but not squeezing your butt cheeks together. We definitely don't wanna do that. That is not flattering in any way, shape, or form. But uh, just to give an example, so pretend you're doing RDLs, you know you're doing your straight leg RDLs like this, and at the top, that's what should feel like, the top, not, not the bottom. <laughs> okay, so that's a great way to kind of envision um, how to, I guess, manipulate the tensing of the glute. And again, we're not squeezing them together. <laughs> not, we're not doing that. <laughs> okay, tip number seven, be aware of your hair. How does it look in the back pose? We need to make sure that your hair isn't covering your shoulders because they want to be able to see that taper from the back, right? So um, with that being said, we wanna make sure, again, we're not moving the hair off of our back. They don't wanna see our back like this. However, we need to be aware that it's in the middle of our back like this, right? Because we don't want it to be spread out because they won't be able to see anything from the back. They'll just be able to see basically from our glutes down. So we don't want that to happen. And this is, you know, we're applying this to our long haired girls, right? And uh, for tip number eight, I know Adam has a lot to say about the cut and style of the hair um, that will flatter the back pose the best. So if you want to go ahead and yeah. explain tip number eight. Yeah, for sure. So couple of things on the hair. So one of the things that we need to look at is we need to look at how the judges are gonna see you. And let's say you're someone who has a really good arch to their back and they have longer hair. Well, you gotta understand when the hair, the hair creates a wall, keeping the judges from seeing your lower back and, and actually seeing your glutes be less 3D. Because if there's a wall, if they put a wall right here in the middle of your glute, your glutes wouldn't be as 3D, so it looks smaller. So same thing with the hair. So what I like to do is to make sure the glutes look 3D as possible, is to actually have hair, and this is this is not her, she, these are, this hair is a little long, but this is not her show hair. Are you, I thought you were about to say this isn't my real hair. <laughs> Is it um, not? Is it not? Adam. It I, isn't your real hair. It is my real hair because it's real hair and I paid for it. <laughs> so it's technically my hair. It belongs to me and it's from a real person. So it is my real hair technically. <laughs> it is your real hair. So, so this, this hair would be a little long, but this is not her show hair. So how we would have this is one, we want it short enough where I can see that lower back. Because if I could see the lower back, one, I could see how small her waist is from the back, but two, well two, it makes her glutes look more 3D than her hair being wide like this covering her waist. Um, but and, and the width is there. But three, it really takes the wall out of the way of the glutes being 3D. Remember, if I put the wall right here, her glutes look less 3D to the judges. If I put the wall farther that way, I can make her glutes look even bigger because they stand out more. So what we're gonna generally do is cut the hair right about at the strap, maybe an inch below the strap, and make sure it's never ever laying on the glutes. That's like the worst case scenario, is your hair laying on the glutes. And what happens a lot of times is girls will arch so much that their hair like looks like it gets longer because it's like their head's back, and then they're arching, and then their hair just lays on the glutes. So you need to cut your hair for how you pose. So if you're a big archer and your hair shrinks up, you know, your, your, the distance shrinks up three inches, well, guess what? You're probably gonna take three inches off your hair. So uh, it depends on, you know, what you want. But the thing is, if you're trying to get a pro card, you're trying to go after it, you're trying to be the best possible you can be, this is your uniform for your sport and your hair is part of that uniform. So it has to conform to what the judge is to make you look best. And I would also add to that as well, if it is your natural hair and I understand you don't wanna cut it, maybe go with a curlier hairstyle so it raises um, the length of your hair, right? So if my hair was curly, it might raise it up to here. So, but also um, you, maybe you should go into the V cut as well so it's not a curtain. Oh, yes. So even if it is short enough, we wanna make sure it's <laughs> tapered. So when we're looking at the hair, so it's not just the height of the hair, but it is what it shows. Okay, so as Ashley was talking about, we never wanna have it where it's not showing the shoulders. So we wanna have the hair where it shows the shoulders. This is where we should start. Good shoulders showing. And then on this, on we don't wanna, we wanna make sure we accentuate the waist and the lines of the V taper. So what we'll do is we'll technically cut the hair kind of more rounded in. So it accentuates her lines of her V taper. It makes her waistline look smaller. 
Um, well, we don't go full on straight hair back here like this. So it's kind of rounded in, if that's the right word. I'm not a hairstylist, but there you go. Yes, you need to be able to see that waist. <laughs> yes. You worked hard for it, so you gotta show it. Yes, yeah, so I guess in the end it all comes down to just showing the waist as best it can be, making it look as small as possible, right? Absolutely. Yep. Tip number nine, be aware of those little things that you don't think will show in the back pose, but do. And what do I mean by that? I mean, your hands, make sure they're not visible in the back pose. And also, a lot of girls tend to look down in their back pose like this, looking at their toes to make sure they're at the right uh, position or if they're on the line. And what that does is it's a very unflattering pose because it looks like you're hunched over. Your chin needs to be up, even in the back pose, okay? And again, with these hands, make sure they're not visible from the back, right? Because I'll see some girls do this and I can see fingers poking through the middle thigh and it's very distracting. <laughs> so, I mean, if you do a little bit of a, like a palm, but outside of your palm, that's okay. However, I, I would say that if you're not careful, it can blend in with your quads. So you don't want to make it look like your quads are huge like that. Because sometimes it's hard to tell from a distance where your quad starts and where your hand starts. And maybe for the viewers, you can show them where your hand, if you turn around the other way and show them where your hands are in the back pose. This is typically the rule of thumb right on, right on the front of your quads, nice and easy. And then you're not gonna see any of her palms. You're not gonna see in between her legs. Or Some there. girls do this too. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. So um, just depending on what you're comfortable with, um, I tell the girls to give a little bit of a press, like press just a tiny bit on their quads to help with creating that rear delt to show. Um, but that's pretty much it, it's pretty simple. All right, tip number 10, our last tip for you today, and probably one of the most common errors I see in the back pose, especially with the beginners, is an over bent knee in the back, right? So if you must bend your knees, I always say go with more of like a soft bend, and that's only because sometimes it can make, if you lock out your knees, it's sometimes it can be harder to balance for one. And then secondly, sometimes it makes people's hamstrings um, a little too striated and a little too hard. Um, so if you must bend, it should never look like you're bending. It's more for balance and so that you can distribute your weight to your heels, right? Because you always want to keep the weight in the heels. You never want to keep the weight in your toes, right? So by creating like the pressure in your heels and the weight on your heels like this, you can get the most out of your glute, right? It'll pop out more. So with that being said, this is what I mean by like a soft bend. It does not really look like I'm bending. This would be locked out. This would be a soft bend, just for balance purposes and to distribute the weight. Um, but I, I oftentimes see girls do something like this and it it looks like you're about to take a dump on stage. <laughs> and we don't want that. It makes you look squatty, yeah. <laughs> squatty potty. It makes you look squatty and it's just not flattering because remember again, guys, the judges are at a low angle, okay? So if you're squatting, it just, just looks like you're one. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, we don't want to bend the knees. It doesn't much. look good. So I see this all the time, you know. And it, you know, it might not look bad from this angle, but from the judge's angle, it's just not, not a good look. Yeah, everything, everything amplifies when it's at the judge's angle. If you're bending forward and your glutes flatten out a little bit, what well, flattens out a lot to them because they're looking at a lot lower angle. If you're squatting, well, it looks like you're really squatting when you're doing it to the judges. Um, and you, usually they do that, they sacrifice that for a little bit of detail on the hamstrings. And again, we're not looking for hamstring separation in bikini. That is not a thing that we're judging for. So don't stop posing to make that more. All we need is a little bit of tie into the glue and full round glutes, especially that what, the thing you never want to sacrifice is the upper outer edge of the glute. And every time you do those things, you bend forward, you push too hard, the upper outer glue is what pays for it. And that's one of the more important things, the upper shelf, the tie-in of the glute, and then the rest of the legs, it's just tiny bits of detail. We're not talking separation lines or anything like that. So, so in your posing, aim for those two things. If you're gonna err on the side of adjusting a pose that might not look as good, like maybe bending a little bit, aim for making those two things better and not making the hamstring and adductor pop out more. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And I also wanted to add as well, you know, like we keep mentioning about the judge's angle being lower than let's say forward facing, when you're practicing with your iPhone or whatever, maybe make sure that that iPhone is at a low angle. And the iPhone is a great tool to record yourself and to go back and see what angle or what position in your body looks best because these subtle little differences whether it be you know pointing the toes forward or putting pointing them out arching your back keeping it straight 
they're gonna make a, a huge difference and there's no um, way to tell you guys how to do it unless we see you in person so that iPhone is gonna be important so you gotta do your own trial and errors with it so anyway guys thank you again so much for watching we appreciate it and then shoot us in the comments below of what you want to see for our next tutorial video thanks again